Hi everybody, I'm Jack the Rambling Raconteur. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a great weekend. Uh, I wanted to do a quick video like rundown of my March Mystery Madness plans, uh, reading plans. And so first up I have Walter Mosley's Devil in a Blue Dress. This is a reread for me. It's a great book. Uh, I'm actually reading it right now. I started it this weekend. It's kind of my transition from February to March uh, book. And I don't know if I'm going to finish it tonight or if it'll, it'll push into March. Uh, but this is a great mystery. It's the first book in the Easy Rollins series, which is set kind of in uh, 1940s through late 1960s, I believe, uh, LA. And this is a lot of fun. Uh, that could fulfill either my person or color prompt, but for color, I'm actually going to go with John D. McDonald's Darker Than Amber. Um, I read Bright Orange for the Shroud last year in March, and uh, I, I really enjoy the Travis McGee series. Part of what's like really interesting about it is they're not just like fun mysteries <laughs> that move. But um, they also, they span so many years that we really get to see the United States changing and the world changing um, through like Travis McGee, what he sees happening in Florida and in the U.S. Um, around him. And that's part of what makes this series fun. So Darker Than Amber. For my weather prompt, I have Nevada Bar's Ill Wind. Uh, Nevada Bar writes a series of mysteries set um, with a character named Anna Pigeon who works in the National Park Service. And so men, most of them are set um, in national parks or at national monuments or like national recreation areas. This one's set at Mesa Verde in uh, Colorado. And it's one of the early Nevada bar books. Um, Track of the Cat is the first one in that series. I highly recommend it. Uh, I know some people <laughs> don't enjoy it as much, but my wife, my father-in-law, uh, my father-in-law and I all did. Uh, for my single word title prompt, it'll be Rosanna by uh, Seol and Walu. And this is the kickoff book in the great Martin Beck series. It's 10 books written by a husband and wife uh, team. And again, really what makes these 10 books special is not just that they're absolutely fantastic police procedurals, probably the single like best series of police procedurals that I've ever encountered. Um, if, if you have one you prefer more, let me know in the comments, please. Because uh, I, I regard this 10 book sequence, the, the Beck mysteries as like the best police procedurals. Um, this, uh, th this series is great because again, it's not just 10 books, you know, 10 mysteries, but it's 10 books that illuminate like what is happening in Sweden, what is happening, uh, sort of in that full culture. And, and it, they, Seol and Walu really were looking at using the books like as a way to illuminate all of their culture, not just, you know, 10 quick mysteries. So this is the first book in that series and it involves, uh, Beck is a homicide investigator uh, investigating the, the murder of a young woman uh, who, I, I, if I remember correctly, they haven't even really figured out like what her name is initially. Um, yeah, no clues. So it's, it's very, very good. Uh, in terms of place, I'm going to do the uh, Trinidad Noir, Volume 2, The Classics. And these are all short stories. Um, and... and these uh, city, you know, blank city noir books, a lot of the original ones that are more like newer stories, sometimes I don't, I feel like they're very hit or miss. Like the, the stories are scattershot. Some are excellent and some are just, <laughs> it's very flat. Um, but the volume two series that were older stories that had been published, you know, previously, uh, all set in certain cities are dynamite. And so I'm really looking forward to reading uh, this volume and sort of seeing what, you know, it illuminates, you know, about, uh, about Trinidad and Tobago, but also just some great writing. Uh, for my uh, person prompt, uh, it's going to be The Conjure Man Dies uh, by Rudolf Fischer. And I have it in this great Harlem Renaissance four novels of the 1930s. Got a really cool, like, dust jackets. This is part of a two-volume series uh, Library of America did some years ago. And um, I believe Conjure Man Dies was just reprinted and possibly re-released this year, maybe in the last month, because um, I've been seeing it pop up. I think that my wife sent me an article about it from some online review, uh, but I'm looking forward to reading that. It's one of the earliest mysteries uh, with like, you know, a, a black detective. So looking forward to reading that. Please don't spoil any of these. Uh, in terms of number, this will be the one I may not actually get to, but we'll see. And that would be Tokyo Year Zero by David Peace, which is the first of his uh, sort of Tokyo trilogy. Um, and I really enjoyed David Peace. I've read five of his books. I read The Red Riding Quartet and I read GB84. And I, I really, really enjoyed all of them. So 
I'm looking forward to reading this. Um, I don't know if this will be sort of at the end of the month, and I'm not sure if I'll get to it, but I'll be reading it at some point this year if I don't get to it. Uh, so those are my sort of March Mystery Madness reading plans. Uh, some varied crime fiction, but I, I'm looking forward to each of these books, um, and I'll hopefully get to discuss some of them with you guys. Uh, there are many hosts to March Mystery Madness. There are more hosts to March Mystery Madness than there are suspects in Murder on the Orient Express, but I'm going to try to find all their channels and link them below. I know I've watched uh, an TBR videos and sort of announcement videos from Janet Remembered Reads and the Bookish Bryants, um, at least a couple of others. So I'll, I'll be trying to uh, link those below. But let me know what you're reading. And again, I hope you're doing well. I hope you have a great start to March. Thanks, everybody.